everybody, Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for watching. I am back with a new project. For this project, I have used the Country Craft Creations exclusive paper, The General Store. And what I have done is made an embellishment box or a keepsake box. Honestly, whichever way you want to do this. So this is nine by about five and a half. And I've just got just a bunch of like buttons and things and Tim Holtz pieces and parts out of my stash that I've added on the top here. Um, some Prima like resin flowers that I don't even remember. A couple of years ago, again, from Country Craft Creations. When you open this up, we've got a good size box here. We've got this little tray in the top that will slide side to side. And this comes completely out and then you've got divided space down below. So the bottom space is about three and a half inches deep. And this little top tray is two inches deep and it's about five by seven. And the bottom is about seven by nine. Um, so you've got a decent amount of space. Like if you make a bunch of flowers, um, you know, and honestly, you could probably add some more dividers in here and, and partition this off even more if you wanted to. Um, but this paper was just so perfect for this. I initially started this intending on using a different paper and I finally was just like, no, this one is the paper. So very, very cute collection. This one actually came out over the summer and I just had not had a chance until now to work with it. So again, I've got just some, you know, Tim Holtz bits and pieces out of my stash. Um, I believe these are actually some little Prima handles and again just out of my stash. So not super difficult to put together. I'm gonna put my little tray back in there um, and I do plan on hopefully, fingers crossed, making some embellishments with my leftovers to put in here and I will do um, separate probably just process videos for those or reels for those. I won't do like a full tutorial. Um, because it wouldn't be anything groundbreaking that you haven't all already seen before. So um, that's it. Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start with our bottom. For that, we need chipboard that is 9 by 7. Our cardstock is going to be 9 by 12. I'm sorry. No, 10 by 12. I'm sorry. We're doing this with a one and a half inch all the way around rather than a one inch just to give us um, a little bit of extra space for the cardstock to grab. So I'm using my one and a half inch spacer and then my one inch with my half inch mini spacer to get my spacing right on this. Covered the back of this with tape. I'm just gonna get the backing off of that. And go ahead and lay that down. I really don't need that second one so I'll move that. Okay, so there's our first one. I'm gonna set that aside. Next piece is our back piece. This is nine by five and a half. Our cardstock is gonna be 12 by eight and a half. So again, inch and a half on each side. Back of it's completely covered in tape. And I have my tape overlap on this and I didn't realize it at the time when I was doing it, um, that it had overlapped by that much, but that's okay. It'll still work. It doesn't matter. It just makes getting the backing off a little bit trickier, but that's okay. All right, so nine by five and a half, cardstock 12 by eight and a half. Okay, we're going to have two side pieces. Both of these pieces are six and seven eighths by five and a half. The cardstock for these is going to be nine and seven eighths by eight and a half. But if you wanted to just go ten by eight and a half, it's not going to matter. It's an eighth of an inch. It's fine. Okay, so again, get the backing off the score tape. Go ahead and lay that down. Do our second one. And 
again completely cover the back of that with the tape and then go ahead and put that down Okay, and our front piece is going to be three and one quarter by nine. So our piece for this is going to be 12 by six and one quarter. And again, I've got one little strip there in the middle that doesn't have tape on it. It's fine because this is all getting wrapped and whatnot and covered up. So it's really not going to matter. It's not that big of a deal, but you do want good coverage just so that this goes down onto your cardstock and the cardstock stays nice and flat. Okay. So we'll go ahead and move that. I'm going to grab the base piece out of my stack here and my bone folder and my scissors. I'm going to use the chipboard to fold the cardstock around the the chipboard and around. We're going to do this on all four sides, just like if we were making an album cover. This piece we are going to wrap entirely again, just like when building an album cover with the lay flat method. You want to completely wrap and cover this piece of chipboard. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and miter my corners and I've been doing this lately and it seems to work really well that I'm going to hold that piece folded in miter from that corner out and then once it's done you can see I've got these little tabs I can just fold this other side in miter again and I get that whole square out without having to go through and cut it twice and that has seemed to work really, really well. I'm not getting it cut too close in. Um, it just, it seems to have worked really well. So that's what I've been doing lately. All right, so this one, I'm gonna go ahead and add score tape around my edges. And again, you know, and I've said this in, I'm not even sure how many tutorials at this point, I really should count, huh? <laughs> um, you know, I do this because it just makes it easier for me for that, um, you know, after I get the glue on there and I go to burnish that down, it makes it grab immediately. And if you've got, you know, carpal tunnel or any kind of, you know, um, difficulty with your hands, you know, the lay flat method is a godsend for that. But adding this, you know, to this step makes it that much easier to get this wrapped and burnished and not have to like put a ton of pressure on it when you're burnishing it down. So I'm going to go ahead and get the backing off of my um, tape there. I don't know why I didn't do all four of them at the same time. Probably for the same reason I'm doing a voiceover. I was talking to somebody as I was doing this. Uh, and sometimes it's easier to just, you know, do the voiceover later and, you know, be able to hang out with somebody and, and visit while I'm doing this. But not always. And you can see there I'm missing a nail because I went to move something heavy on this morning and it caught and popped right off. And there we go. So I have one ugly nail, but that's okay. It happens. Yeah, but of course it's going to bug me in about two days. I'm going to have 10 ugly nails because I'm going to end up taking the other ones off too. <laughs> and I'm not due to go back to get them fixed for another week. So there we go. The saga of my nails, which for the record, just, you know, fun fact, I only started doing again when I started recording tutorials. When I started paper crafting, I realized I couldn't pick things up like small things or paper or whatever with my nails on. I was just way too hard. So I had taken them off and I had them off for probably, oh my gosh, 10 years easily. And I started recording tutorials. The first couple I did, I watched back later on. I was like, oh, my 
no, my fingers look terrible. And I started getting my nails again and had to pretty much learn how to craft with them on. <laughs> Which now I have no problem, but at first, man, it was not easy. Okay, so we've got that part. That one is ready to go. Okay, so I had footage that did not actually record. So I'm just doing kind of a mock-up of how you're going to do your side and your front piece. Okay, so it's already in. This is all matted. We're going to move on to the inside here in a minute. Um, but it did not make it into the video. So you had your pieces, the two sides in the front that you put down on your cardstock. You're just going to fold it around and burnish just like you did with that base piece because that was before everything shut off on me. Okay, we're going to miter the corners. Okay. So for your front piece, all you're going to do, and I'm just going to do this with just tape rather than gluing it because this is literally just a demo because my piece where I actually did this, of course, did not record. Um, on this one, you're just going to wrap one of the long sides, okay, and that's all. For these two pieces, and this is where I'm really annoyed with myself that it did not record, and I did not realize that it wasn't recording, or I could have stopped, but that's okay. For both of these, you're going to fold and burnish and miter, just like we've done. this just really you know fast just kind of give you a demonstration of how this goes together since you know so you would be doing this so this would be your three and a quarter by nine inch piece this is all your wrapping these two would be your five and a half by seven pieces or I'm sorry, six and seven eighths by five and a half pieces that you have two of. I do not. It's okay. It's okay. It's just a demo. Oh, I didn't fold that in. That's why. Okay. So on these two, you're gonna fold in one long side and both of the short sides. Easy peasy. Okay. Maybe we are, maybe we aren't. So apparently I am unable to get the backing off of the tape. with the other one as well so this again would be your six and seven eighths by five and a half pieces you're gonna do the same thing on both of them This is the part that you really need to know. 
so what I will do is apparently lose my scoreboard here somewhere. Nope, not lost, just buried. It's okay. All right, so I will take my scoreboard. I'm going to take your front piece. And I will go ahead and use glue for this because it definitely makes it easier. What I'm going to do is stand this up in the corner of my scoreboard, okay? Okay, so push it all the way over, all the way down. I'm going to take one of my pieces, make sure your flap is on the same side, and this is going to go down in like this, okay? Because essentially, you can kind of see there, this piece is going to be on top of this piece, okay? And then I'm going to do the other side the same way. So again, I'm going to stand it up, lay that down, push it all the way up against it. You're using the scoreboard to make sure you get that corner nice and tight, okay? So that's what you're going to have, only you're going to have the short piece and then the taller pieces, okay? So this is the front and sides of your box, okay? So now we can go back to the actual recording where we put the back on and I didn't lose the footage. So there you go. Okay, so not only did I not get the uh, wrapping of those pieces, I also missed the assembly. So. Basically, what we're going to do is you want those two side pieces on top of the front piece, okay? So that's why you can see there's like a little bit of a gap there. We're going to go ahead and do the back piece. What I am doing on the back piece is exactly how I attached those side pieces to the front piece. Um, I will put a link in here to one of my other boxes that I've built using this method because um, this this box building method I, I've done pretty consistently for a couple of years now. Um, so, you know, I will leave a link for that. I might actually grab a clip out of one of those and throw it in here um, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to attach this to the other part of our box. So I'm using my scoreboard just to... Um, help make sure I get that corner nice and tight. So I have the back piece standing up, pushed into the corner, and I'm going to lay that side piece down up against that. So when it's stand, when it's like pushed together, that side piece is on top of the edge of that chipboard. It's not next to it, it's on top of it. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here that I'm going to get the backing off. I'm going to get my glue in here. And this is why I'm looking for a new recording and camera setup because I swear to you, all I have to do is breathe wrong and this thing stops recording on me. <laughs> okay, so I'm just bringing my box around and I apologize. I should have set up my other camera so you got a shot of how this goes together. Um, but I'm just doing the exact same thing I, you just saw me do, that I'm getting that corner lined up in the corner of my scoreboard and then bringing the other piece in. So you can see there, there is our box base. And now we'll work on getting the bottom in. Okay, so the bottom piece. Normally, I would, and I'm gonna show you, because I totally got this screwed up and I'm going to show you exactly how I got this screwed up. Because of how we did the sides where I've got those side pieces are slightly smaller and they kind of sit in side. Normally the way I square up my boxes, because I don't normally put the chipboard to that little inside edge. Um, normally the way I square up my boxes is I go through and I, you know, glue these corners down and then I take that base piece and typically we'll be able to just push it down 
in the middle of that box and that will square everything up and you're good to go. So what I was doing here was going to run some tape around the outside edge of um, that base piece. And I'm sure you're going, why did we wrap this whole thing when you're just going to put it in there? Just because normally the way this goes together, this would just be in there and, you know, it just makes it easier to mat. However, you're going to see where I screwed this up here in about two seconds because I go ahead and I pull my backing off. I flip it over and I go to put it in. And it does not fit. So you'll see. I mean, I even get in there with my glue, the whole nine yards, just like I normally would do. Like you've probably seen me do on the base of other boxes. And then it's going to be a mess. So we're going to leave it there just to show you what not to do. So I go to put it in here and there's always a little bit of resistance, but there was way too much and it wouldn't go in all the way. And you can see how it's like bending up and it won't go down in the corner. And I mean like I am standing up with the bone folder pushing down and it's not doing any good. And I finally went, okay, I'm going to have to do this differently. So you'll see me turn around and punch the bottom back out <laughs> because yeah, I got that all screwed up. So now I am tearing up my corners because we're going to actually have to put this on the bottom and use those tabs to wrap around. So I am very carefully, they weren't totally dry, but they were dry enough. Like this made a mess. Um, and then I'm going to screw it up one more time here in a minute too, when I actually like fold these over and go to glue them down because I didn't start on the right side. So yeah, that little ugly part ended up being like on the outside, but it actually sits exactly with the sides of the box, like the chipboard. It sits perfectly on that bottom um, instead of sliding down inside, which is normally how I would have done this. So I'm going to go ahead and fold that over. I'm just kind of bracing the other side so I don't accidentally push it to the side. Okay. And then I end up matting over the bottom of this anyway, which is fine. But, um, yeah, we even got stomach coming into this shot, <laughs> which I will say there is less of it. I'm actually wearing a shirt that I bought three years ago and it just now kind of fits. Actually, it does fit, but it just now fits. So there we go. Yay, me. All right, so glue, and then you'll see where, you know, and as soon as I do this, I go, oh, well, that should have gone down first, not the other side that was pretty, but that's okay, because we're going to mat it anyway, and it's not going to matter. And then our last side. And, yeah, there we go. All right, so there is our box. I'm just going to kind of push that down. And then what I'm going to end up doing is matting this. Okay, so now we are going to build our little stopper pieces that are going to go around in here so that our tray will sit and slide back well. It may not slide. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it the full width or if it's going to be smaller that can slide. Anyway, we'll get to that later. For now, we need to measure how wide our front and back stoppers need to be. So, I don't use this ruler. Let me put it on top of this a whole lot just because I don't like how it, like the measurement starts part way in. However, for this, it's perfect because I can lay it on here and I can see exactly how wide I need to make my stopper. Let me get lined up. 
and we're going to go 8 and 13 sixteenths because of course it's going to be a weird measurement. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got my, I've got some pieces of chipboard that are three inches high. And that was eight and, let's try that one more time because I literally don't remember what I just said. So I'm actually going to go eight and seven eighths. Sorry, no. Eight and three quarters. I'm going to back it up that sixteenth of an inch because we will end up wrapping this in cardstock. And so I've got my old blade in here just to go ahead and get that ready to go. So we're going to cut. Okay, so that's our front piece. We're going to measure in the back and make sure the back is going to be the same, which it should be. Almost. Yep. No. And this is why I don't do this technique on boxes super often because it can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so that one. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that one at eight and three quarters as well. Actually, I'm going to go the sixteenth on this one. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get those in, and then we'll figure out, well, no we won't, we can do this anyway, whoops, for our side pieces. So again, doing the exact same thing again, I'm just using the ruler I'm not really fond of. We are going to go six and... Okay, this one I think I am going to have to use my normal ruler. So let me figure out where it went last night. Ah, there we go. All right. So in this case, this one is going to be seven or six and seven eighths. So again, okay, and I am actually going to mark on here so back front left because it can be just slightly different from one to the next okay so on this side we're gonna do the same perfect so six and seven eighths okay knife and I'm just going to finish splitting these apart just like that okay so let me get some cardstock together and then we will go ahead and get these wrapped and put in our box. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my left and right pieces. So my card stock for these is five by seven, okay? I know these are both at a seven eighths inch, inch measurement, that's fine, okay? So what we're gonna do is put our card stock in here. We're gonna use a one inch spacer. I didn't do adhesive over the entire back of this because the way we're going to wrap it, it's really not going to matter. And we're going to go just like this. So you'll see it's flush on this side. We've got a little bit of overhang. That's just to make sure we get it covered edge to edge because we will trim that off. Okay. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Right. 
And so for our front and back, we're going to do the same thing. These pieces are five by eight and seven eighths. Let's see, I started to do that and was like, I really don't know that I need complete coverage because these are going to, the way they're going in and where you're not going to notice that it's not, it'll be enough. That's my point. Okay. And last one. All right, so in there for now too. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from that outside edge. We're gonna just miter this just tiny, tiny bit. Okay, you don't want to get like super aggressive. That's just so when we fold this over, it's not hanging over the edge, okay? So I'm gonna come in here with my knife right along the edge of the chipboard. I'm gonna cut, and I don't even need to cut the whole thing because then I'm gonna come in here and miter just slightly. Just like so, okay. Then I'm gonna take my score tape on both edges. Let me get the backing off. just like we normally do. We're just going to do it just like that because we don't have the corners where we have to worry about. And then there's one of our little stopper pieces. Okay, you're going to do the exact same thing with the other four. Okay, so these are all wrapped. We're going to go ahead and do our front first. So all I'm going to do is put glue. Like so. Tip this up and lay this down inside. Okay. Then before that dries, so that we can adjust side to side if needed, I'm going to come in with my other side. end and I can tell you as I'm putting these in they are a little bit on the tight side which I expected okay, so again okay so now rather than put glue on this one I'm gonna see if it's too big and I do need to take just a tiny bit off of my back one. So what I'm going to do, just like before, I'm going to take my trimmer 
and I don't really have a measurement for you on this. I'm kind of eyeballing about where I think it needs to be trimmed and getting that started. And then I will finish that trim off with my knife. And since we're going through a little bit more, it's gonna take a couple of passes to get that off. Nice and clean. And we'll try it again. And that is perfect. Okay, so now, Not front. <laughs> That'd be about right, wouldn't it? Okay. And there's our stoppers. Okay. So we just need to go ahead and mat those with whatever paper. If I'd been thinking this through, I would have trimmed my papers that I matted around the sides there because I've got that cute store shelf pattern. Um, I would have cut those a little bit shorter so I could have matted them down there, but I think I'm actually out of that sheet. I don't think I have any more of that one left, so I'm going to have to go with something else, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mat those, and then we can decide, because this does sit just below the front edge here, so as you can see right there. Okay, so that means the little box that's going to sit on top won't slide out. It'll just slide side to side or it'll run the full width depending on how we decide to do this. I haven't decided yet. I think it's gonna be easier to make a smaller one that kind of can move side to side and be taken out versus the big one you have to take out, but that's just me. Um, the other thing that we need to decide if we're gonna do is if we're gonna add a divider in here, which I think I'm going to. So to do that, we're gonna measure again from the back to the front. And this did push this out just a teensy bit, which I expected it would, and it's fine. So our center piece is gonna be six and seven eighths. So let me find wrap to cut this from. Okay, so let's see if this is three inches. Uh, actually, I'm going to make it, no, I'm not going to make it shorter. Okay, so I'm right at the edge. And I'm close enough. Okay. And then we're going to go six and seven eighths. Before I put anything in here, I'm going to slide this in, and we do need to take just a hair off of this, which I kind of figured we probably were going to have to. This is one of those things that's not exact, it's almost impossible to do it exactly, at least as far as with my the method that I've come up with to do it, but it is easier than it could be. <laughs> Okay, so that's gonna sit in there just like that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take another piece of cardstock, and I'm gonna take this out. And we're gonna cut this to six inches. I'm going to grab my normal blade so I can actually cut something here. Okay, so six inches. And then we're actually going to leave it the full length because we're going to trim some of, actually, no, I don't want to do that. Hold on. Let me think for a second here. So let's go nine inches. 
Oops. Nine where we actually cut it all the way would be helpful, wouldn't it? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our piece here. Because what we want to do is this. I'm going to put some adhesive on here. And again, I'm going to put it just in the middle. But it's going to go on both sides in the middle. And actually, this one I do need to do it down to the end, don't I? Sorry, I haven't done one like this in a long time. So I'm going to grab just some half inch score tape because if I'm only running one line I really should have run it at the bottom um, instead of in the middle and then we'll go on this side in the middle or the bottom okay all right so what we're gonna do is grab our scoreboard and grab a one inch spacer. Okay, so we're gonna lay this in here. We're gonna put this on the end, okay? So this is gonna go all the way over like so, okay? Which it should have been longer than six inches because okay, I'm gonna cut that again because that's not right. Okay, so our piece here, we're going to cut it six and a half, just to give us some wiggle room by nine. Okay, so again, one inch, space, one inch spacer, we're going to put this all the way to the top, okay? And we're going to do it with the end that has the adhesive going all the way to the end. Okay. All right, so then we're gonna take this out. We're gonna get our backing off. We're just going to use the desk and the chipboard. We're going to fold this over and down. Okay, that way it gets that cardstock all the way on both sides without having the extra bulk of wrapping it all the way around. Okay, then we're going to come in here with our knife. And we're gonna cut just like so. Okay. So now what we need, we're gonna stand it up like this. You're gonna take your craft knife and you're gonna split it. You're gonna push in here until you hit the chipboard and then trim that. Okay. Now that it's trimmed, I can kind of train it to go both directions out. Because this is how we're going to attach this inside the box. Okay. You can see that those are sticking up. So we are going to miter. And we're going to miter on the bottom as well. Okay. So 
there's one side. Do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, I'm pushing this in until I get to my chipboard, which this side's a little bit longer so that we had extra rather than not enough. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of start the fold back with my bone folder and I'm just pushing along here along here to train it where it needs to go and then a little miter on me just a tiny bit, but that's okay. It'll be fine. All right, so now this is going to go in here like so. Okay. So I am going to kind of kind of use my centering ruler which I actually got it right where it needs to go. So there you go. Get glue on my tabs on both ends. Okay. And I'm just gonna try and get it as close as I can to center. glue okay so there's your little divided area you can go ahead and mat this and we'll come back and we'll work on our tray and our top okay so let's do our little tray so cardstock eight and seven eighths by no what is this <laughs> you think I'd know by now Okay, eight and seven eighths by seven. Okay, that's what I thought, but you never know. Okay, one inch spacers. We're gonna wrap this just like an album cover, so um, back is covered completely in tape. Cardstock is eight and seven eighths by seven. Chipboard is six and seven eighths by five. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one. So, that did fold right. There we go.
Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay. We'll go ahead and do our glue. So now I am going to mat this side of this piece so that our nice smooth piece is going to be on the bottom. So my mat is six and three quarters by four and seven eighths. Okay. All right. So this will sit down in here and we'll slide back and forth once we get the sides on. So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. And we're gonna work on our front and back pieces. So two pieces of chipboard, six and seven eighths by two, two pieces of cardstock, um, five, I believe, no. What did I do here? Yes. Five and seven, five by eight and seven eighths. That's what I do. Okay. So we want the one inch on the side. Again, covered completely in card, or not cardstock, tape. And I'm trying to say, I promise. slid on me and I can see where I didn't get it all the way out. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that one. I'm going to do the other one. The cardstock moved on me, so that was entirely my fault. So it's going to flush, flush with the bottom. We're going to fold it up and over again, just like we did before. The only difference is we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish. The reason for that being I want to take my craft knife and I want to cut along the side here. Okay. All right. So then we're going to fold and burnish. And then I'm going to take this and miter. All right, because these are the tabs we're going to use to attach our side pieces when we get to those. And then this tab is how we're going to attach this down like so. Okay. So. I do need tape on this other side as well. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and 
ahead and get, and you could go ahead and prep both sides of this with tape. Um, okay, so over and down. And then we're going to fold this up again and crease it just like when we're doing our normal album cover wrapping. And we're going to miter and miter. Okay. So there is our inside. And I'm going to just, on the sides only, not on the bottom, I'm going to burnish that kind of down and over because it is going to go around like this. Okay. For the end pieces and for our center divider pieces. You're going to need four pieces, four and seven eighths by two. To that in a second. So four and seven eighths by two on the chipboard. One inch spacer. And again, we're going all the way at the top. So these two are going to be our center dividers. So I'm going to set those aside because we'll deal with those last. Our end pieces are going to be four and seven eighths by two, just like those. Cardstock is going to be five and a quarter by five. Okay. So we want the five inch up here at the top because this is going to go like this. And then we, this way we have, actually, no. Well, we could do it that way too. That would actually work because we want that one inch. Yeah, let's do it that way. That's going to be easier. So five inch, when you're lining this up, using your scoreboard to make sure you get right to the edge. And again, tape all over the back. And we are going to go all the way in the corner, all the way at the top, and drop that down. So again, five and a quarter by five, five inch is going to go across the top. too, didn't it? Okay, so I'll have to fix that one too when I fix my other one. All right, so what we're going to do with this piece is you're going to go ahead and fold this over and burnish. And we're going to cut just to the edge of the chipboard, the bottom of the chipboard that is. Cover the other side of this with tape. I'm sorry, the cat is incredibly whiny today. I don't know why. I don't know if he just thinks all of us should be in the same room doing something, and that's why he is upset, but who knows? Okay. So we're going to be backing off here and off here. We're going to just fold this over and down. And then we can come back again with the knife. And remove that little seven eighths, seven eighths of an inch. The reason I didn't cut this the exact width of the chipboard is because I wanted to make sure that we had full coverage on here. And the only way to make sure we do that is if it runs over just a hair. Okay, 
So then this piece will just be our bottom flap, just like this. So this will end up attached like so, okay? But we'll get to that piece in a minute. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna fix my other sides that didn't go down quite right, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our two side, or well, four side pieces, too long, too short, okay? I've got the ends of the two prepped with um, score tape. So what I'm gonna do, and I got really aggressive when I fixed this piece when I mitered it, and I probably shouldn't have, but it'll be okay. I'm not remaking it. <laughs> Let me switch so you can see. All right, so I've got the glue or the tape there. And this is what I meant to do last night when I was doing the base part of the box. Okay, so I've got glue there. I am pushing this all the way into... Well, I'm going to burnish that up against the side there. So I'm going to push this all the way into the corner of my scoreboard. So you can kind of see there how it's standing up. Okay, this piece is going to go in here like so. Okay, and what I'm doing with that is you can see here how this smaller side piece sits on top of the long side piece, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna get the backing off get glue down along here and then there I'm gonna burnish up along the side and again I'm gonna go all the way into that corner and yes I have it upside down now so I'm gonna make sure I turn both pieces upside down and I'm gonna go so that I am up against the top of that piece. Okay. So again, it's on top of the bottom piece. Okay. Now we're going to take this other piece. up along the side again and we're gonna do the exact same thing so I'm going in the corner Let's get the right side of it <laughs> and again I'm catching on the other end of the scoreboard where you can't see it and again we're going in so that we're on top of the piece okay then we'll come back to our other end again. Get the backing. And this time we're going to fold it up and around. Should have done the other end first. Okay. Up and around. We're going to line this all up here and then up on the corner. And I am going to turn this and put it back into the corner here again just to make sure because what we want the end result is we want those side pieces. Okay, see down here? We want that on top of our longer end piece. Okay. And so that's what we've got going on both sides. Okay. All right. Move the little camera back out. All 
All right, so now I'm gonna let this sit for a few and dry, but then we'll come back in and we'll put the bottom piece on. But we're not quite to that point yet. So let's look at our two pieces that are um, for our dividers inside. Okay, so these are gonna be very similar to how we did the dividers on the other, um, the center piece, the bottom, the base. This piece here. <laughs> Since apparently I can't get out a coherent thought today. All right, so I'm gonna grab my bigger tape. I'm gonna just go ahead and get It's not exact, it'll be fine. And here as well. Okay. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to fold it around. Okay? Just like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and get the backing off of here. along the top of that just to kind of flatten it out a little bit. That's not what I want because I'm going to cut my finger open on camera if I try to do this with that. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I've done it before. Okay, so then again over and down. I can move this out of the way. All right, so now, because I thought about this a little bit, so we're going to fold and fold and then we're gonna miter because I know the other one I had you like take the craft knife and cut out like to split that and I decided that really wasn't working the way I wanted it to now we're gonna come from here actually not yet before we cut from there we're gonna come along the bottom here with the craft knife and cut off that extra and then we can come in and miter on our bottom corner as well okay once you've got those mitered you're just going to stand it up on the end and you're going to burnish so that our tabs to do our divided piece lay flat I'm going to do that on each end. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to fold, and fold, fold, and fold. And again, that's just so that I get that visual reference on where I need to start my mitering. Okay. here and get that little piece off and then miter at the bottom that was way easier than how I did the other center piece but again it's been a while since I've done a divided one like this uh, so I'm trying to think the last one I did that I put a divider in I don't think I actually did it as a tutorial I think it was a prototype and I hated how I did it so this might be a first the more I'm thinking about it. Okay. All right, so let's set those. Actually, no, we're going to put these in before we put that base in. So what I'm going to do is fold these tabs out, which we need to do anyway for when we go to put our base in. Okay. And I am going to grab a pencil and I'm going to measure if you turn the ruler over the right way. So we've got about six and three quarter. So we're going to go at two inches 
and then I'm going to come over here and do in two inches. Okay, come on the opposite side, do it again, and again. All right, so I know you can't see my pencil marks, but I can. So we are going to come in with our glue. Really, I should have dry fit this first, but it's okay. And I'm just lining those up on each side with the pencil marks. And I'm making sure I'm pushing this so it goes to the very bottom against my mat. Wipe off any extra glue. And there's our first divider. And again, with the glue. And again, I'm going to find my little mark here. Light it may be. Oh Lord, I can't see it on this side. Oh, must be right where it is. Okay. And again, line it up. The extra glue, which you're gonna mat, so it's probably not a huge deal, but okay. All right, so there's our base. We're going to flip this over. I am going to go ahead and add score tape, which really that was, I should have done it the other way and let this, that's okay. We're going to do it the way we're doing it. It's fine. So I wasn't thinking about how this will go on the bottom, that it's going to be a little bit different. And two, I should have put this tape on before I assembled this, but that's okay. It happens. It's not the end of the world. I'm actually going to miter these off just a touch more just to take care of some of the bulk but it's not necessary all right so now backing off on all four sides. Okay. I am actually going to run just a teensy bit of glue along the top of the exposed chipboard. Not a lot. We don't want it to squeeze out, but, and then this will just lay right down inside there. And then we can take like so, brush that up against and over and down. opposite side just to make sure it stays nice and straight. And 
this thing is sturdy. It's not going anywhere. I probably have my 20 pound cat stand on it and you wouldn't even know. Okay. All right. And I think I got my little dividers in a little deeper than I meant to because I've got a little tiny bit of bowing right here in the middle. But you know what? It's fine. Okay. And there is our insert. I'm just going to get in here and get anywhere where we got some glue sticking out. Generally a couple of little places. And there we go. There is our insert. So provided I didn't completely screw this up at the last minute, which I did not, this will sit in here and slide back and forth like so. All right, so I'm going to take this out and we are going to look at our top. So I have a piece of chipboard that is, what is this, nine and one eighth by seven and one eighth. And I'm just going to kind of lay this on the top and that's where you can see where I ended up got a little carried away when I was doing my inner inside pieces so this kind of sticks out a little bit on the back more than I would like but we can compensate for that when we do our lid so the lid should fit pretty much edge to edge because we're not doing anything on the sides this is literally just gonna fold back there's gonna be a little front piece and then this will fold back Okay, so we're measurement wise, we're good side to side. And I think we're even good on the front because we're gonna put another piece on the front here. But we only want it to come just this width right here. So this is two inches and with this piece sitting on top it is I'm sorry two and a quarter so this is actually two and like three sixteenths which is gonna be kind of a pain but no it only needs to be two because this hangs over in the front that's why see I knew I had a plan here that it really was not just you know me making stuff up <laughs> okay so let's set that aside we're going to cut this down with our chipboard blade to two and a quarter because I did leave it long on purpose just because I wasn't sure how I was going to do the front of this if it was going to come down further or not but ultimately I decided that I did not want it to come down further so there we have it. Okay. All right, so we have our piece there. That's two and a quarter by nine and one eighth, which is exactly what we want. Okay, I am gonna grab some cardstock and get it ready to go and prep the back side of these, and I will be back. Okay, so for the lid, we've got our two pieces that we <clears throat> measured and fit to our box. So I can give you the measurements, but you're going to want to measure for yours so that it fits yours exactly. So this is 7 and 1 8 by 9 and 1 8 and 9 and 7 8, 9, I'm sorry, 9 and 1 8 by 2 and a quarter. So we're going to start with our bigger piece. And we're going to use 1 inch spacers on the top and on the side or not what did I do hold on did I just pick up the wrong one I did okay sorry this is not my piece of paper <laughs> that is a different piece of paper <laughs> oh my lord no, I stopped to eat lunch. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, there we go. So we got 
uh, 11 and 1 8 by 9 and 1 8. Back is covered in tape, like always. And we are going to wrap this just like we have wrapped the base of our main part of our box and our little insert box. Okay, so because of that, I'm not going to go through the entire wrapping process, but you're going to wrap this all four sides just like you did with that one. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with our front piece. Okay, so again, the one inch spacers, adhesive all the way around. My piece is my chipboard is nine and one eighth by two and a quarter, so this is four and a quarter by eleven and one eighth. So just one inch on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap both of these, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've kind of gone round and round my head how I wanted to do this. I think I finally settled on what we're going to do. So we have our two pieces for our lid, okay, that we've wrapped. What I'm going to do is I've got a piece of cardstock that is nine by, it really looks like it's crooked, I think it is, because of course it is. So we're going to adjust that really quickly. Okay. So, Okay, so nine by ten and five eighths. Okay. The reason I don't usually use that one because it's just kind of hard to move in and out of the way, but that's okay. All right. With the ten and five eighths at the top of the scoreboard, that's much better. We're going to score this, assuming I can find my scoring tool. There it is at two and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to take a sheet or a piece of score tape that I actually do need to trim down just a hair. I think that's too big. But we are going to cut two Two and one eighth. Okay. And I'm going to put this flush to the bottom and then it'll be flush side to side. So this is nine by two and one eighth. Okay. So again, I'm using, letting the scoreboard help make this easy. Okay. Pull the backing off. And I'm going to lay, actually, going to slide it over. And I'm just going to kind of look because this, of course, is slightly bigger. I'm just going to center it up and drop it down. Okay. Out. And even then, I'm still slightly off, but it'll be okay. Okay, and then you're going to be able to fold that at your quarter inch, two and a quarter inch. Okay. So now I'm going to take another sheet that is nine inches wide. I don't remember if this ended up being. No, I need to cut a different one. Okay, that's what I thought, but I couldn't remember for sure. Like I said, I had this worked out in my head how I was doing this, but sometimes that's different than the reality, so. All right, so we're going to cut this to nine inches. And this is seven and one eighth, correct? Yes. Yes. 
So I'm going to cut this now just shy of 7 and 1 8. So just barely under that. Okay. This one I'm going to adhere here. And I'm going to go all the way to, actually no I'm not. how to show you this because I need to go okay so I'm gonna hang this off the edge of my table like so okay I'm gonna put it on get it started. So I'm going to actually set this underneath to brace it. This way you guys can at least see what it is I'm doing. Actually, no. Let me find an actual, like, big piece of chipboard. There we go. All right. So. So what I want to do is make sure I don't want to do this. Hold on. I'm going to have to figure this out. I know. Okay. So I'm going to flip it over this way and I'm going to burnish the longer piece. And I would do this off the edge of my desk, except I need to be able to show you how I'm doing this. Okay. So what I want, essentially, is for this to sit over the edge, which of course it would sit the other direction, because the front's the other way, but I want to get this adhesive on the top edge of our front piece. Okay, like so. And then we'll lay it down. Okay, so essentially we want it to adhere at an, so that this stays at an angle. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So I'm going to lay it back on here. I'm going to take this piece. Line it up so that it's even, and then lay it down. And then we can come in here and burnish this all the way down and kind of push into that groove a little bit. 
Okay. I know that was kind of convoluted. I was trying to figure out the best way to show you what I was meaning to do. And that was about it. So this will now sit just perfectly on top. What we need to do next is you're going to take fold using the chipboard so that you get your nice defined line back here at the back of the cover. Okay, and then we're going to do adhesive on this side. So this piece is one and a quarter. So I'm going to take one of my little scrap pieces here. I'm going to cut it just under one and a quarter. Okay. Make sure it's at nine inches. It is. And we're going to go ahead and put this on here. Okay. We're going to do this right just almost to the edge on the bottom. Okay. We've got just a tiny, tiny bit hanging off on this side, which we don't want. Line this up. This front should sit just exactly right there. It's going to be just a hair wider, which is what we wanted. And we're going to line it up on this back. And then I will fold this up. Get our backing off. we lined up here at the back. Let me push that over and burnish it down. And there is our box. So I can put our little insert back in and there we go. There is the embellishment box which is what I'm gonna make this for. Keepsake box however you want to use this. Just a little storage for some of your supplies. It's up to you. So there we go. Um, I'm going to map this and I'll come back and we'll do a little closure right here. And then that's about it.